I'm while excited you, for this one. Yeah, I can, I can feel, feel. So both of you, while you're waiting, I want you just to connect to why is, why is dealing with anger important in your life? What is it? What, what's happening in your life that's causing you to want to deal with anger, both personally or with people around you? You don't have to answer it right now. I just want you to connect to it while we, we just wait a couple of minutes. People. Sometimes that causes anger in people because they're going to wait for people. Yeah. yeah. But I actually never wait for yeah. people. You know, people because quite often people use waiting, being late as a game, right? Mm. Especially women, Camilla, they love, they love being late. Oh, my goodness, yes. Except, except when there's a sale. They can always get a sale <laughs> on time. Boxing Day. You know, it's funny. Hey? Boxing Day sales and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you know, it's really funny. Women turn up and they say, I'm sorry, I'm late. And I go, uh, no, actually, it's divine timing because I, I, I dismantle the game straight away. Yeah, I, I'm, I said, I'm not waiting. I've been sitting here connecting or doing whatever. It's always divine timing. So you've got to just, just set the game. Just sit there and really connect to what bothers you about anger in your life. It could be other people who get angry or it's about you don't know how to deal with your own anger. And then consider what is your outcome you want? What's the biggest thing you want to learn tonight to change your life? And Camilla's laughing. She's just connected with something. <laughs> So welcome to this talk tonight, which is on anger. And I'm really excited about this topic because I feel it's extremely important. And why is it extremely important? Because a lot of people are angry. I'd say most people are angry, but a lot of people don't even know it. And we call that passive anger, right? It's inside of them, right? And anger can have a lot of destructive behaviours. Quite often violent. You know, if you look at domestic violence, like hundreds of women die every year in Australia from domestic violence. And that all relates to anger. There's a lot of, if you look at a lot of kid shootings in the United States, kids are angry. And quite often it's not even their own anger, it's actually they're downloading it from the collective anger. Now, if humanity doesn't let go of their anger, because it's passive, right? If humans don't let go of the anger, the earth releases it. Because the earth doesn't want to have, be, have, have it in its consciousness. And therefore, what happens is you have volcanoes, fires, and earthquakes. Yeah? To release that energy. Mm -hmm. So the earth will release it if humanity doesn't release it. And so we're going to talk a lot tonight about why people get angry. What's the underlying cause of it? And, and as you know, most of my talks, most people have the wrong perception and misunderstanding of anger. Because a common belief that is not true is that, is that people make me angry. N never, ever, ever does everyone make you angry. Every emotion, and you guys know this, but, but we're going to talk about specific tonight, every emotion is a choice that you make. And see, a lot of think, people think anger is bad. Absolutely not. Anger is extremely powerful, moving emotion, if you know how to use it. But people aren't taught how to relate to it and how to use it. It's a very powerful energy for change. We're going to come and show that when we look at the emotional tone scale tonight, right? So it's a very powerful emotion. But if you actually hold on to it inside of your body, which a lot of people do, because you don't know how to deal with it, and the reason why people don't know how to deal with it is they're actually scared that if they connect to their anger, they might go and do something which is very destructive, like kill other people or something. And I can tell you from my own experiences, when I went and got one of my first healings, which was a while ago now, it was rebirthing. And the guy straight away said, oh my God, we've got to release a lot of anger from you. He said, what? I didn't even realize I was angry. But when in the session, I don't know if you guys have ever had rebirthing. Have you ever done rebirthing? Very, very powerful. Yeah. And they, they get into this breath. It's called rebirthing because it's a bit like when you breathe, when you start breathing, first come to the planet. And it's all through breath. I go, what? Well, how's this going to work? You know what I mean? It's my ego going, how's this going to work? But it's actually extremely powerful. 
and during the session, the guy was totally correct, obviously. And I punched and kicked the ground for about 10 minutes nonstop. This is me releasing the anger. <clears throat> so we're going to talk a lot tonight towards the end about how you deal with anger and how you stop attracting angry people into your life, which is really, which is really, really important. And um, Camilla's laughing because I know that's related to her, right? So the, the, what we're going to look at tonight is understanding <laughs> anger, what, what are its main causes, how anger affects you in your life both in terms of your behaviour and including your body. Because right? anger is a very heating heating energy. It's hot. You know when people get hot-headed, you're angry, right? And if you look at the word, the term inflammation, and you guys know I love to play with words, right? In the word inflammation, it's the word flame. So all inflammations is anger you're holding in your body. Yeah. So people who've got arthritis, as an example, which is the inflammation of your joints and you can't move in your life, they're holding on to a lot of anger. We'll come, come, come talk about what, uh, why. So we're going to talk about the effects of anger and then we're going to talk about how to deal with angry people and, how and what not to do and what, what to do and how to resolve your own anger. Does that sound cool? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So we'll start with looking at what do you want to resolve anger in your life and what's the outcome you want? And we'll start with um, Camilla. Why do I want to resolve anger? Yeah, in other words, what, why is it bothering you in your life? In what way? Because it it's, it's not peaceful. It's destructive. It's chaos for me. So, so you want to share what... What, how, how it's coming out in your life? Um, it, it comes out through my business. It comes out through my emotions, um, my behaviour. I see, notice a difference in my behaviour as well. And it's not just my behaviour, it's other people's behaviour. Like I interact with people who are really angry. Yeah. And it's like what you say, passive, but really aggressive. Like the words are really powerful. That yeah. It's like fire coming out of the mouth. I said, because I work with the angels and I'm very angelic, anything that is really forceful, I kind of really back away. Yeah. I don't like that whole fire. Yeah. So if you resist anger, you're actually taking it on. Yeah. So that's actually one thing not to do. Yeah. And we're going to kind of talk more about that. I'll bring this point up while, while, while it's fresh in my mind. People use anger a lot to control people. Yes. Yeah, they do. Yep. I call it a space weapon. Yeah. yeah. They try and control your space. They actually try and suck energy out of you. Yep. And I know as an example, because when I was younger, I had a very dominating, controlling person around me who got very angry. And as a little boy, yep. I was very scared. Shitless. You know what I mean? Yep. Because it makes you scared and therefore the person feels they can do whatever they want. But they're actually sucking your energy because they're disconnected from the source. So it's like a control drama, you know, in relation to the control dramas we're doing the course, right? So it's used a lot by mm. persecutors. They persecute you through anger. Yeah. But it's also victims do too. You know, people are victims mm. and they go, oh, yep. it's their fault, it's their fault. They're also yep. trying, they, they've got passive anger and they're trying yes. to control you. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you react, the point I'm getting to with you, Camilla, if you react yeah. to people who are angry, yes. they've, they've yes. actually got your energy. And I have done that. Yeah, no, and you feel it. And you, and you walk away feeling drained yeah. and you go, oh, my God, what happened? Because they've been yeah. successful. And, and a type yeah. of reaction to anger is resisting it. If you resist anything, it persists. Yeah. yeah? And quite often yep. people people want you to do that. They want you to resist them. That's why they get angry. And politicians use it so well. They come out with some ridiculous statement or whatever and you get angry and then they go, oh, great, excellent, I've got their energy. You know what I mean? Mm. So the thing is um, not to react to people who are angry. That's a really, really important strategy to have. Okay. <clears throat> if you react, they actually get your energy. Okay. Which means resisting. Stop resisting them. 
And you're only resisting because you know, that's actually, you don't know how else to deal with it, but that's what we're going to give you some strategies tonight. Yeah. Right? Is that cool? But thanks cool. for sharing Thank that. you. Yeah. So, Jade, how, do, how is anger affecting your life right now? In what ways? Like, Camilla shared hers. Yeah. And what yeah. outcome are you looking for? So I tend to hold on to anger. You mentioned, you touched on it all before, um, hold on to it in the body as well. Um, don't really um, deal with it probably in the correct manner. And I do hold on onto it, you know, I feel it in my chest and my jaw and things such as that. So it has an effect on me physically. And then um, things throughout the day, like more relationships with people, whether it be at work or be at home or with family, I'll tend to um, you know, be short with them and just, Know, become aggressive or angry towards them because one thing will happen that that, that triggers it in, inside me. Um, you know, so that is something that I'm wanting to to work on. And one, not hold it in my body, so it becomes like an energetic vampire. I suppose it just takes all your energy yeah. and it just sits there, yeah, and totally. you know, you, you, you just feel so drained afterwards. And then if I do feel it, um, connect to it, understand it, and then move through it. So I'm not holding on to it, and then I can just move on. With, yeah, yeah. yeah, and we'll give you an exercise how to do that at the end. Yeah. But that's actually a bit similar to, to what Camilla said as well, like yeah. being around angry people or having anger inside of yourself. And, of yeah. course, a common response to anger is to get angry yourself, which can hmm. be frustration as an example, right? You get frustrated, which is a form of reacting. Yeah. And two angry people together is totally insane. Have you ever been in an angry argument? You get angry and nothing ever happens? It's like you got angry, you both got angry entities which are actually sucking each other. They're trying to, it's like a fight between the angry entities and see which one's stronger to get the energy. Yeah. It's actually not even the individual, it's actually the entities inside of you. It's an anger entity that you've got. You don't feel any better afterwards. And you don't feel any better because it's like the entities do. Yeah. And they actually get stronger, which means that you've even got more anger inside of you because the entities got bigger. It's a bit like the movie. I know you guys ever saw the movie The Blob. It's a movie a long time ago. It was a funny movie. And it's about a blob like this monster and it would actually uh, eat people and get bigger. It turned people into its own energy. This is what the, yeah. And then and you'd see that the person would transform and then the monster get bigger. That movie was about entities. Those mm. are entities. They transform your energy into anger so they can actually suck your energy. So the two entities get bigger, but you get smaller in the in the earth dimension. Mm. Cool, yeah. And see, I think both of you are reflecting what is very common in the world. A lot of people don't know how to deal with it. And if you if you don't know how to deal with your anger, it can be very destructive, as you know, in your life, from what you both mm. said, like lack of harmony, lack of peace, whatever, right? So obviously an outcome you really are both saying is you want peaceful and tranquil and tranquil in your life. Yes. Absolutely. I don't have I don't have angry arguments because I don't. It's just not part of my life. And there's knowing how to create that, right? Because angry arguments are insane. See, a, an, an angry person actually is, is temporarily insane. Is the entity controlling them inside of them? People are insane. The entities are running them if they're angry. So the, you never talk to an angry person. You walk away from them. Even if they think they're angry with you, but they're not, you know that's not true. And we'll come and talk about the reason why they've got anger. They're never angry with you. They might think it is, but that's just the game they're playing to get your energy. So if you've got a partner who's angry, gets angry, you have an agreement with them. If either of us gets angry, we walk away. And I've done this with with counselling in, in relationships. But I remember this guy and lady came to me and they kept having arguments all the time, including in my consulting room, right? And I said, you two aren't having a relationship. I said, your entities are. I said, you guys just show me <laughs> your entities. You're driving your entities around, right? Third wheeling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, did you, what was that you said, Jade? Th uh, your third wheeling, the relationship between your entities. Yeah, yeah two. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we got them to make an agreement. This is what you do. If either of them got angry, they had to walk away and deal with it personally. And that could be going to the room and throwing a glass of champagne in the fireplace or punching a pillow, whatever it is. But we're going to give you some other ways to do it. 
that that changed their whole relationship. You know why? Because they never had an, an angry argument afterwards. Because as soon as someone got angry, they walked away. They took responsibility for it. Yeah. So that means the because the, the whole purpose of that exercise was to disempower the entities. See, because the entities couldn't like they, they, because they had a strategy where the entity couldn't work anymore, so it just weakened. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? So that's really important with any relationships you have personally, including with clients. Is see, if clients get angry with me in a session, it's the end of the session. That's part of my agreement. I said, no, you can't. Because, you know, quite often, Camilla, this is true. Like, clients actually will push their energy onto you and they'll blame you. Mm -hmm. Oh, Camilla, you know, I wouldn't be here. Well, you're not doing this. So why are you doing that? You know, you heard that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's never about you. So, therefore, straight up, when I do healing with people, like I had a new client yesterday, as an example, right? Okay, this is how I run the sessions. This is about you taking responsibility. I'll help you do it. Yeah, the session's not about me, and if you blame me at all in any way or get angry with me, the session is over. So I've, I've set the ground rules straight away. And I'm actually not telling them, I'm telling the entities, really. <laughs> I'm telling the entities, no, you can't control the session. Because they might yeah. try and do it, because sometimes it's such a subconscious behaviour, they allow the angers, they allow the anger entity to have power because they feel they're more powerful if they're angry. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, I can control Camilla. See, and it's a form of a power grabbing. But actually, it's not. It's actually disempowering. It's, the entity's got energy, but not them. They're actually disempowered. They think they're empowered, but they're not. So that's one of your strategies you can have. <clears throat> it's with the people really close to you, you know, like you both got partners, right? It's with the people really close to you, you need to make an agreement. What happens when someone get, one of you two get angry? Yeah? That's going to change yep. your world totally to start with. Yep. You know, sometimes you start arguing about something and then it gets on to something else which is totally irrelevant. Oh, yeah, but you know, yesterday you did that. or Oh, my God, you did that. And like you end up arguing. About, what are we arguing about? That's you know what, what I say about? all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? What are we arguing about? And you're not arguing about anything because the entity just want you to argue for the sake of it to feed them. Right? Is it common to... Um, like forget things or snippets of your memory of why stuff happened? Yeah, because you're temporarily insane. Okay. When you're actually angry, you're actually temporarily insane. And that's why you've got to be very aware of people. You know, that's why what kids go and shoot people. Like I remember like in America, this kid went and shot 30 people at school because something happened. Right, with his girlfriend and kiss him or something, you know what I mean? And it wasn't that experience, but that triggered something inside of him and he was temporarily insane and he just wants... And if you've got a lot of anger inside of you, it turns into rage. And eventually your body just wants to let it go because it can't hold on to it anymore because it's so much anger and your body just wants to release it. And it, that can be in very violent behaviour which you've got no control over. You know, quite often in those experiences, kids go, oh, my God, I can't believe I shot 30 people. Or I can't believe I did this, right? Or like the guy in Melbourne, he drove up in his car, you know, on the footpath in, in the Burke Street Mall. Right? Remember that? Yeah, right. So, yeah, it's, it's – so people are actually insane. That's why you can't talk to an angry person. You can't. If you talk to an angry person, then you become insane. It's, it's real insanity. Yep. Would that be because, Paul, would that be because they're you know, so angry, they're just expressing full emotion, so they're just channeling their full emotion out, you know, well, the only trying, way that they can feel, and they're not really two, thinking? There's, there's two things. Is, yeah, no, well, they're not thinking because the entity's running yeah. them. But yeah. the body, sometimes the body just wants to release it. Yeah. Makes sense? And that, and that might be why you don't remember things like... You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, why was I angry? Because you just you're not even thinking. You just emo well, you're not emotion. connected to who yeah. you are. I think it's a good point what you bring up to to bring up Camilla's point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. is that the end, the angry entity is taken over so much that you you can't connect to yourself. And you go, what what I'm talking about? What's going What's going on? You know, as Camilla said, what's going on? What are we talking about? Or you can't remember something, right? So that's why if you're if you get an angry argument complex, you actually are insane.
yourself. And therefore you can't, you, you're not going to remember because you're insane. Right? That's why you've got to walk away and be in your own space. And we're going to give you some ways to release anger. Right? But you've got to learn, you've got to learn to release anger. See, in society, we're not told how to release anger. Mm. I don't know when you were growing up, but when I was growing up, we were told, don't get angry. Mm. Yeah? Which is actually yeah. really, really poor advice. No, allow yourself to get angry, but no, it's not about any other people. It's about understanding it and knowing how to transform it, which we're going to come talk about. Because if you do, if you don't get angry, you hold it in your body. And Jade, as Jade said, it's a big issue for him and for a lot of people. And we're going to come talk about how it affects your body in a minute, right? But then you become very toxic. Your body become is actually destructive. It's like holding destructive energy in your body for a long time. That's why your body wants to eventually let it go because it can't control it. Your body can't control that destructive energy anymore. It's like having a time bomb in your body. Your body says, no, we've got to let go of that time bomb. Otherwise, I'm going to explode. I had a student who started this course, and in her first Q&A, when I looked at her, I could see steam coming out of her ears. And I said, my God, you've got so much anger. And she said, me? No, not really. Uh, ah, no, you have. I could see steam coming out of her ears energetically. I said, oh, my God, you have so much anger. It's not you, Camilla, by the way. No, it's somebody else. <laughs> and, well, thank God for that. Yeah. But it doesn't matter if it was because, you know, you can learn from it. Is that cool? Okay, that's a great place to start. We're going to get you to connect to the outcome that you guys want. So I want you to, to imagine, I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to imagine what your world would be like if it was totally peaceful, totally tranquil, and very calm all the time. And to feel that energy, you might imagine yourself being in a beautiful salt bath or lying on a fantasy beach, just listening to the waves. Just You can imagine yourself in that sort of experience where you feel very calm and peaceful and I just want you to allow yourself to feel that energy what it feels like if your world is totally peaceful and totally tranquil in other words there's no anger or aggressive energy in it allow yourself to feel that outcome Okay, so what I want you to keep your eyes closed, keep in that energy. And what I want you to do right now is put your your left index finger to touch your nose. Left index finger, touch your nose somewhere. And this is what we're going to do is we're going to lock in this energy. This is like a lock in that when you do this, touch your nose any time like this, you're going to access this energy. So that means you can choose to access this calm energy at any time because your body relates to it by you tucking your nose. Okay, so you can open up your eyes. That technique I just talked about there, it's called you can lock in an energy. Does it make sense? We used it, we taught a lot of this in kinesiology. Yeah. It's a bit like you lock your, your, your boyfriend or your, your partner's phone number in your phone right and just press number one or two on your dial right it's the same thing you didn't do that with the body you can lock in energies this is really good to do before a session camilla you go okay 
yeah. this is what this is an an energetic state. Ding, if I do this, psh, I mean I go in, and your body knows this means that. I love it. It's a very it's a really, really powerful technique. So simple. Yeah, right? it's really you, cool. So, Jay, yeah. we'll start with you. How does that how does that feel? Yeah, um light. Um a lot lighter. Just yeah, very calm and relaxed. Just cool. that yeah, you know, things are just wash off instead of being absorbed. Does that make sense? And as you know, every experience we have a choice. Because sometimes people think they need to get angry. No, they don't. See, I could pour water over your head, Jade, and you could get angry at me, or you could laugh your head off and go, "Your pulse is crazy," right? But that's your choice, right? Because yeah. if you look at a lot of road rage, which is a big problem in the world, right? People get angry. Oh my God, did this or God did that. Well, you could just, or the alternative is you can just drive on the road and go, oh, whatever. You know what I mean? That's your choice. Yeah, that's one of mine, definitely. Yeah, that's why I'm bringing it up. Yeah. That came yeah. from inside of you, right? Yeah. Oh, so yeah, what you can do, what you can do then, um, Jade, is when you get in the motor car, mm -hmm. sitting on the traffic light, you can just do that. Oh my God, did, did you oh, go? Yeah. Did you imagine the experience when you were in that calm, tranquil energy? Um, yes, actually, I did. That yeah, what did you imagine? The, um, I was just driving, but I was, as I said, feeling relaxed and, and light, and, and everything was just washing off me. I wasn't actually absorbing anything that was coming towards me. Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. obviously, from your perspective, if you get angry on the road, then that means you could temporarily go insane, and that means you can do crazy things like. Um, uh, you know, sometimes in America, people shoot, stop people and shoot them on the roads and stuff. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, where you cut people off or whatever you do, right? And if you're temporarily going insane on the road, it's actually quite destructive because you mean you could have a car accident because you're not because you're not present. So now you have got a simple technique to change that. Mm. Your yeah, girlfriend's saying, awesome. "Oh my God, I just know. Just tell her I know something. That's why it's like touching <laughs> your nose. It's like I know something." But it's stick it there permanently. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, and of course, you know, the other thing is if you do feel self conscious about touching your nose, you can just imagine that your index finger is touching your nose. Mm. Just do that right now. Just imagine your index finger is touching your nose and allow yourself to go back into the energy. It's no difference, right? the power of our mind yeah is that cool yeah well done so that's going to change your life already yeah your money's worth already right well, yeah. well done Jay. that's going to be really cool uh, thank you that's great yep okay so um and of course what we're going to do tonight is give you some exercises and help you understand how to get into that state easily all the time but the more thing that could be an exercise you can do every every day in the morning you wake up and you go oh i'm going to get into that tranquil space and start off the day that way because as you know the law of attraction if you're in that energy what light what day are you going to create if you start the day being in tranquil peaceful energy yeah hmm. you just gonna learn yeah. how to know how to hold it in your body and that's why you've got to release from the anger in your body because if the anger is still in your body, you're still going to create anger in your life. Law of attraction. Yeah. Okay, how did you feel, Camilla, when we did that? Yeah, I felt very much um, very peaceful but like home. They're saying this is home. This is like normal. Oh, wow. If, Which it is. It's true. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. What did you feel? Did you go to, into a particular experience, into a particular place to feel energy or...? Beach is where I was sitting at the beach and it was the wind and the waves that was just clearing me because I work so closely with the beach, just the, that sensation instantly done. Yeah. 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 So for me, it's like I really like parks, right? And in yeah. Melbourne, we've got a lot of nice parks. Camilla lives in Perth. Um, Jade, Jade lives in Melbourne. Yeah. Right? Now I go to St Kilda Botanical yeah. Gardens, which is absolutely amazing. It's like a fairy garden there. Have you ever been there, Jade? Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Now when I go yeah. there, that energy, I, I just feel it straight away and walk into the park. It's like, oh my god, you know. So I imagine being in that park, and I go into that space of energy. Yeah. 
And just thing you can do with your client, you say, okay, if you're in a very tranquil, peaceful space right now, where would you be? So I picked up the beach when I mentioned that exercise, which obviously came through from Camilla, right? But yeah, it can be different. So for some people, you know, one of my clients who I gave the other day was being in a bath, probably because she's a mermaid and she likes being in water, right? So just lying in the bath, uh, imagine being on rocks, which is very peaceful for her. But just giving that exercise to your clients or to people around you is very, it's going to be extremely important for you, right? So we're going to see how we can hold the energy, right? Cool. Well done, guys. Fantastic. So let's start off by what is anger? This, this is what we're going to talk about. What is it? What actually do we mean by anger? And if you look up any book or dictionary, it'll probably say something like this. An irritation, annoyance or frustration when a person feels they've been wronged. That's probably the definition of it. And probably you could say it's an intense irritation, annoyance or frustration when a person feels they've been wronged. And feeling similar to that, you could say displeasure, they, people can have resentment, or people can be outraged, or there can be hostility. It's like a really burning energy. Mm. And, with, and there's a reason why I'm going to use, I use the word burning in a minute. And, and Camilla might relate that to when we talk about fire, the fire element, right? So what we really say that when a person feels they're being wronged, what they're really feeling is they don't feel they're getting what they deserve. That's quite often a belief people have. This person's not treating me how I feel I deserve. So you get angry with them. Right? Is that true? Yeah? This is a belief mm -hmm. that people have. So quite often people blame others or they blame the world. Oh, my God. The world's making us have vaccinations or, or, and they get angry with people or whatever. Right? But as we know, no one creates anger. Anger comes from inside of us. So people feel they're not getting what they desire. So therefore the anger is there to tell them that they desire to change something. That's, what, that's the power of anger. That's why we have anger. It's a moving yes. emotion. That's why it's for fire energy. Because fire, in the five elements, Jade, is about change. That's why, that's why when you get anger in your body, it's a very fiery energy. Inflammation, it's like flames, right? It's a burning energy. Because fire burns things so things can change. That's why anger is related to that burning energy. Does that make sense? Because so, really, what you've got a burning desire to change something. Something's annoying you. I don't want to be treated that way. It's not about the other person, of course. It's about you've got to change something inside of yourself, as we know. right? It's never about the other person. So the important thing to understand about anger, it's a catalyst for change. That's really, really important. That's what most people don't understand. Because in a way, people when people get angry, they tend to be destructive, which in a way they, 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 they want to change something, but they do it through, destruct, through, through destroying other people, right? <laughs> Because they blame other people. Oh, you can't do that to me, or the world can't do that, or whatever, right? And you blame other people. But it's not. It's never about changing other people. It's about changing yourself inside. Because in relation to the five elements, and I'm going to talk about a bit about the five elements, Jade, because we 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 talk about it in our course, and 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 yeah. Camilla's quite familiar with it, right? Anger is related to the wood element. And the wood element is all about the big picture. So if people are angry, it's telling me they're not connected to their bigger picture. Yeah? Which means they're not understanding the big picture of why something's happened. Yeah? I'll give an example. There's a post the other day. This lady posted on Facebook and she was really angry because she got sacked from a job. Right? So she's angry. Oh my God, why did they sack me? How can they do that? See, the, and, what, and what I'm connecting to is she's not connecting to a bigger picture of why that happened because from the law of attraction, she's actually created that. That's why you never get angry with the world. 
We all know the law of attraction. We create things in the world. We always get what we deserve. Because you deserve by what the energy you put out. When people say they're not getting what they deserve, that's actually not true. That's a false belief. You always get what you deserve by the energy you put out. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. You, yeah. So if you want to change your world, you've got to change inside. So I think the message, and I put this as a message to that lady, because, you know, you just post. I said, no, it's not about being angry about losing your job. You, should, you could be excited that it's a message to you that you need to change your career or move in a different direction. So I know a lot of healers last year got really angry, as an example, because they go, oh, my God, I can't do healing or I can't do one-on-ones, whatever. But that's because they're angry with themselves because they're not changing. So you're really angry with yourself. Mm. because it's a great opportunity last year to go online which I know Camilla does a lot of online conversation uh, sessions right so like my business expanded last year didn't contract so really people are really angry with themselves right this is what the truth is people are really angry with themselves for something they didn't do that they wanted to do or they thought they did something they shouldn't have done That's really where the, the, the anger comes from, right? So they're really angry with themselves for not doing something they really desire, like following a passion or following an opportunity, right? Or they felt they did something they shouldn't have done. Now, again, that's actually an illusion. <laughs> so these are the false beliefs people have because that's a self-judgment. As we know, everything's perfect and you learn from the experience. Yeah. So you might have been done something in your past, right? And you might have abused a woman or something. And you did something, to, oh my God, I felt angry with myself because I did that. But you're not looking at the bigger picture. Now, why did I do that? And what can I learn from? It was perfect. Everything's perfect. And that's a real moving energy. Because remember, anger is about movement. So if you look at the bigger picture perspective and say, oh, okay, why did that happen in my life? And what can I learn from that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've got an example. I've got a client who got thrown in prison because he raped a woman. Now, he learned, I, I, I helped him understand he learned a lot from that because he's probably going to help people in, who've actually probably done that as well. That's part of his journey. And if you can understand that and why he went through that, he can help a lot of people who have been through that experience. Because as we know, there is a lot of anger between males and females on the planet, which has been around for a long time, which is causing a lot of disharmony in the planet. This is the bigger picture. So quite often the disharmony that you're having with the opposite sex is actually just part of the collective disharmony that needs to be shifted. And you're experiencing it so you can help understand it and shift it. Does that make sense? That's the bigger picture perspective. Because if, for, I, as an example, for instance, I know a lot of people that have issues with the opposite sex because they need to help shift this in the collective. For instance, a lot of men have issues with their mother at birth because of what went out of the birth process. And it's actually just their judgment, although the mother did anything wrong, right? But they have an issue because of what they feel they experienced at birth. Because it's quite interesting, I've done a lot of sessions around birth, including Jade, right, around birth, right, in the last week, right? And so they won't have an issue with women because of their mother. If they're holding on to belief about, oh, my God, I can't trust my mother or she disconnected from me or whatever it is, right, then that means you're going to hold the energy against women and you're going to affect your whole relationships. Well, you, the other mm -hmm. way you could look at it is look at the bigger picture and say, okay, why did I have that experience and what can I learn from it? And then how can I be of service to society? In that way, anger is a catalyst for change. Yeah, because quite a lot of people think angry, anger is bad, right? That's why they're told, don't get angry. Oh, my God. No, anger is a passion for change. It's a massive energy. My God. If you connect to anger, right, it can help you change things. See, because quite often why you get angry with an experience from your child is it gives you a passion 
of what you want to do in your life, right? Like I've got a client, a student, right? Well, she's a graduate now. She got sexually abused by her brother. Now, she's got a really strong passion because she was really angry with what happened to her to being abused by her older brother, that she's really passionate about helping kids who've been sexually abused. Now, pedophile, as we know, pedophile is a big problem in the world, especially by leaders in authority. So that, that anger, she's redirected that into her passion. And passion is a fiery energy. It's, it's quite a similar energy. Does it make sense? So if you're there, so I'm really angry with that. You know, like people go, I'm really angry with the environment. What humanity's doing? To, great. Get into action. What do you want to do about it? It's a catalyst yeah. for change. So what I'm going to do is help you show that is I'm going to show you the map of consciousness. So I'm just going to share the screen for a minute. Okay. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. I love this diagram, right? Now, I love this, right? This actually comes from uh, David Hawkins' book called Power Versus Force. Right? Now, you see on the left-hand side, he's got a scale up to a 1,000. Now, this scale is not a linear scale. It's an exponential scale, which means that if you double it, it's a lot more than double. A good example of a non-linear scale is like earthquakes. You know, if you have an earthquake at 6 compared to an earthquake at 3, a six is a lot, lot more powerful than three. It's more than double. Does it make sense? Mm. Yeah. So if you look at anger, right? Anger is not at the bottom. Anger is, is if you see the yellow there, he's given 150. Well, now, of course, that's a lot higher than guilt, shame, apathy, and grief, which are, and, and of course, no emotion is bad, but it, anger is a moving emotion. Whereas if you're in guilt and shame, right, and you guys both know that, and so do I, because we've been in it, right, is if you're on guilt and shame, they're very low, right? People don't move. That's why you want to move people up the emotional tone scale, right? So anger's at 150. But really to get people to change, you need to get them up to at least courage. And David Hawkins in his book says that only 15% of people are above courage. That's why the world's not shifting. That's why we're going through a major awakening right now. Okay. So now to get people to move above anger, you've got to help them move into the emotions above it. What is emotion above anger? Pride. Honour yourself. Because remember why people think they're angry? Because they're not getting what they think they deserve. We get them to honour themselves, to feel pr proud about themselves. Oh, I'm really cool what I do. I'm a great healer. Or, and that's not being arrogant. It's just being really cool at what you do. Yeah. I did this body session yesterday on this. She's a healer, right? She's actually quite a significant healer. But she's never really had body work. And my God, it was life-changing. And just the, the message she sent me today was amazing. It was like, oh, my God, I had the best sleep ever. And my body so connected to my body. And... And you go, oh my God, you know, it's like honouring that I helped that person shift. That's being proud of yourself. That's going to move you out of anger. So the first thing is having ways you honour yourself. So, Camilla, how do you honour yourself every day? Just tell me a couple of things you do every day to honour yourself. Uh, meditate. Cool. Um, and I honour myself and... Um, sometimes buy myself a coffee because that's my feel good. Cool. Excellent. Excellent. I have a yep. coffee because I like it. Cool. Yep. Excellent. Jade, how do you how do you have pride in yourself, right, every day? Yeah. Um, well, m meditation as well when I can. Um, exercise, I've got a couple of things that I do that I make myself do because I know that I'll be better for it, like cold showers I do cool. in the morning. Um, or at night for at least two minutes. Um, and I have a, an alarm on my phone that goes off at certain times during the day just with a sort of a um, yeah. affirmation that I, that I just repeat a few times. And that, you know, if, yeah, a, if a I do great that... Way, I, I, cool, yeah. I love it. A great way to, 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 to honour yourself is to celebrate. Hmm. And some celebration can be small, like Kelly said, have a coffee. So it was my birthday on the weekend, right? Do you know what I did? I, I went into a luxury hotel with a spa bath. Nice. Right? Exactly yeah. sweet on the top, overlooking the beach. 
and I had spas all day. I pampered myself because you know why? I deserve it. See, I feel I deserve it. It's not, I don't care what other people think. You know what I mean? It's I'm doing that because I'm just honoring myself and I'm sitting in the bath going, yeah, what did I do in the last year? What did I achieve? All right? What have I done? Celebrati celebration is a really great form of pride. And this is one reason why people can't move above anger because they don't pride themselves. They've got issues of, they've got self-worth issues. That's quite often why people are angry. They're really angry with themselves because they're not honouring themselves. Because they're not connecting to their bigger picture. Does that make sense? Yeah. But the fiery energy, remember the fire energy of anger is there to help you shift and therefore you need to move up to courage. Where, and you look there, it's a level of empowerment. Life is exciting. So, because remember when you're angry, it's a catalyst for change. My God, when you're angry, there's something I want to change in my life. So if you get, if people trigger your anger, remember if people around you, if you suddenly get angry, they're just triggering anger inside of you. It's like they're giving you a gift. Does that make sense? So you've got to ask yourself, my God, what do I need to change? I, I need the courage to change something in my life. Is that cool? And look at Kamala. Kamala has made some major changes in her business, haven't you, Kamala, in the last few months? Right? Yeah. And that's, and that's a moving energy. I'll give an experience of one of my clients. She, she came to me and she said, Paul, all of my boyfriends have always been angry. That's annoying the shit out of me. So in other words, she was taking on the anger, right? And I said, oh, that's because you've got unresolved anger inside of you. So you only attract angry people if you've got anger inside of you. So if people are angry around you, you go, excellent. There's anger I need to deal with because otherwise you wouldn't attract them. Because if you're in that peaceful, calm space that you both guys were before, well, there's no angry people in that space, are there? They're not. You don't attract angry people if you're in a calm, tranquil energy inside, right? But if you've got unresolved anger inside that you haven't resolved yet, then you will still attract them. It's unconscious. And of course you attract them to help you deal with the unconscious energy inside of you. So going back to this client, my God, why am I keep attracting angry men? So, you know, the first thing and thought that came to me, ah, what's your energy like with your dad? Oh my God, my dad was so angry all the time. So she hadn't dealt with that. So she kept bringing angry men into her space until she resolved it, which is her, and she created the whole experience in terms of the bigger picture, the wood energy, to help her understand about what her desires are and about knowing what she really wants with men. So I got her to look at what relationship she wants with men, which is all about the relationship with yourself. And she went and connected to, yeah, oh, this is the type of man I want and this is the type of energy I want. And the next boyfriend she, she, she met, she married within about two months and he was the most calm, peaceful guy in the world. She, met, she married him after about two months. You know what I mean? <laughs> why? Because the energy inside of her changed. That's why. <laughs> she, I got her to honour herself. Now, what do you really want? What do you really desire? And I got her to shift that energy around, you know, okay, you met an angry d dad because you need to learn how to shift anger and move above it and really honour your own desires. Pride. See, if you honour your own desires, you don't get angry. So this is a really important question to ask yourself, and you both might want to write this down. Whenever you're getting angry, is ask yourself the question, what change do I want to make in my life right now? That's a really empowering question. Write that down. What do I really want to change in my life right now? Okay, so what we're going to do because we're going to get you to this, feel this. So I want you to go back to the last time you got angry. And I want you to allow yourself to feel it. I want you to connect to that anger. And now it's okay. Say, hello, anger, my friend. Cool, I'm glad you're here. You got a message for me. What do I need to change my life right now? At that point in time when you got angry. 
So really allow yourself to feel it wherever it is in your body. Just sitting with the anger, it's okay. It's just an emotion, it's just an energy. And it's there to give you a message. And just ask the anger, what do I need to change? What, what's, what, what is there in my life I want to be different? And what action do I need to take? Okay, I've got Jade's going really deep. He's got a big anger bullet in front of his chest. He shot himself in the heart with his anger. <laughs> Jade's laughing because he just connected to that, right? Okay, so Camilla. Yes. Would you like to share what the experience is you had with anger and what message it had for you? Um, this was a relationship breakup. Um, Recently, so I was, yeah, yeah. So I was really angry about that, and it the thing that I needed to do was change the relationship. So I needed to change the direction of that relationship. So therefore, what action did you need to take to do that? Because it's about changing you. I had to disconnect from, I had to disconnect from my partner, at the time. To give you to give you to honour yourself, which is cool. It's that pride. Yeah, I had to honour myself and to really look at where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do. So what I needed to honour space. Yeah. So this is about a lot of more about how you honour yourself in the relationship. Yes. So what you it was going. It was, back to, it was going back to basics. Cool. Yep. Now feel the energy that I want you now to feel that passion of that change that you've made so turning the anger into passion now i want you to feel passionate about about that change you've made freedom so, yeah yeah so freedom that's yeah, cool yeah. so you've moved right up the emotional turn scale right yeah so with any every anger you turn the anger into passion so i want you to feel the energy right now camilla in your heart Feel the passion of having that relationship that you've desired to change and now create. Just feel for 30 seconds. I just want you to sit there. Just breathe into your heart and feel the passion, which is a similar heat, heat energy, but feel the passion of being in that relationship that you desired and you've now had the courage to create. And now I want you to send love to that anger that helped you bring that. And you can say, thanks, thanks that into the anger and you can send it off to wherever it wants to go. Maybe at the bottom of a volcano. It's or the ocean. In the ocean. Yeah, it's going to the So how do you feel right now? Peaceful. I feel relief. Cool. So you imagine yeah. if you could do that with every experience when you feel angry in the future, you're going to connect to the anger, acknowledge it, at the, and it's a lot better if we do it at the time. Yeah. So if your partner's around, you go, oh, my God, I'm suddenly getting angry. You go, oh, partner, excuse me for a minute. I've got some anger that's come up for me. Thanks for bringing it up for me. You thank them. Thanks for that. I'm going to go into my room and I'm going to deal with it. I'll come back in a peaceful, tranquil space in a minute. How powerful is that? Right, and the only and the other person can do whatever they do. It's their choice, right? And you go and connect to it, and yeah, then you yeah. come out feeling that passionate energy. You go, oh yeah, this anger was telling me this. Exciting, and you turn it into passion, and you feel the passion in your heart. Yep. Yeah. How empowering is that? If you can do that with every piece of anger, my God. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks for sharing that. Well, Jade, thank you. What went on for you? What 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 experience did you have when you went into a recent anger? experience or you're laughing so oh well, yeah i'm on the way home tonight from work uh in the car i could feel that so, driving um, funny funnily enough i know who would have thought but um yeah just uh the yeah i just get angry at you know trivial things like people you know cutting in front or going slow in a lane and the windscreen obviously often coughs the rough of my um profanities that come out my mouth after that so that's definitely something that happened tonight and, and um, so, what was that, so, so when you connected to the anger, what was the message for yeah. you? What, what, what change are you looking for? 
Yeah, so I've got um, on one level just to obviously be more patient and a bit more understanding um, in the moment, but I think overall would be a change of career because I've spent a lot of time in the car going to and from work every day to a job I'm not really, doesn't really, um, you know, bring the best out of me and align with my best self. So that could be a message that I need to stop doing that and, and the, the change needs to be there. And you were getting this message for a while. You yeah, know what happened yeah. in the last talk, Camilla? I said to Jay that he yeah. needs to be a speaker because he knows a lot of wisdom. Yeah. And one of the other students in the talk, Janine, she's got a regular as well, she said, yeah, yeah, yeah I always yeah. love what Jade says. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm picking up for Jay that he needs to do like um, some kind of course that's going to lead him to his next step. Yeah. That's coming from the angels, right? Yeah. Well, that's me. Yeah, I'm doing a course at the moment, which is uh, more business related, but something I'm interested in, which will cool. hopefully lead to something yeah. different. So that's yeah, yeah, yeah. very appropriate. Yeah. So I want you to connect right now, Joe, into your heart, and I want you to feel the passion of being in a job or career that you really desire and you really like. Keep breathing into your heart and feel the passion and feel how calm and tranquil you will be by having the passion of following this career. So Camilla, just look at Jade, just see how his energy is changing, especially his heart chakra. Mm. Oh my God. His Expanding. Heart, yeah, isn't it? It's just got a lot bigger. Yeah. Oh my God. Jade, you've got such a big heart. My God. Yeah, that energy. You put the energy out, you're going to have the whole world wanting to come talk to you. Massive empathist, Jay. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. How did that feel, Jake? I mean, Camilla and I got excited, just connected your heart chakra, but how did you feel? Yeah, no, um, like a cold flush. Yeah? Yeah. What, but, what, um, does yeah. Mean, what does that mean, feeling cold flush for you? I don't usually get, but I can only imagine it's, if anger's heat, then this would be the opposite of that, which would be, um, yeah, Releasing yeah. It. yeah you'd, tranquility. You'd, you'd be yeah. holding a lot of anger in your body. Yeah. yeah. So going back to the to, well done both you guys. It's a powerful exercise, isn't it? How simple Absolutely. is that exercise? It's so powerful, my God. As you know, moving up through courage, you want people to have the willingness and acceptance that they can change their life and move right up into joy and peace and enlightenment. And if you're feeling the passion, in that exercise, I was getting you guys up to at least 500 from 150. And I can show you the power of how you can do this as a client really quickly. I got an example, I had a client the other day, and we teach this in the course, Jade, about how to move people up the motion tone scale. I had this lady the other day, and I was walking through her with the park, and she was telling me this experience she had, right? And she met this guy who's, who she believes is a soulmate, right? And she just had sex with him and, and she hadn't had sex for a while, right? But after the sex, he had to leave. He suddenly realised he had to go somewhere. And she, she went, and, and when he, she talked about it, she went right down to grief, like 75 on the stone scar, right? She felt the sadness, rejection. Oh, my God. But she sort of understood that he had a reason to go. But a guy just leaving after just having sex, and the sex was good, right? My God, she went into grief. But straight away, mm -hmm. I got her connected into the joy of having that experience and just appreciating how beautiful it was. And straight a minute, she got into joy and peace and laughing within a couple of minutes from the grief. Because I just made her feel the courage and understanding to honour herself and what she went through and to accept and just to love herself and, and just be aware of what she's just creating from the bigger picture perspective. So she went from grief, like crying, sadness, up into joy. Yeah. Awesome. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So well done, guys. That's really cool. So that's an exercise you can do. So the important thing is here, if you really understand 
what the anger is telling you and then you take an action. So you ask, okay, hello, anger, what do I need to change right now? And then the, the, you follow that and you might want to write this down as well. What action do I need? Loving, a, loving action. Let's call it loving action. What loving action do I need to take right now? Uh, for Camilla, it was, I need to, I need to break away from my partner right now, right? To give me time to look at the relationship. Well, the loving action for you, Jade, is that is to do a course and focus on that course, and to focus that you are changing mm -hmm. and moving a different career. Yeah. 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 And when you feel the passion of that, you're turning the anger into passion. I like to, I even call it exercise, turning anger into passion. That's a great exercise, right, to do with your clients. And Camilla, you can feel free to do that with your clients, right? Yeah. Of course, remember, you guys are going to watch this video again, so you can you can get the yes. exercise and write the steps right. But that's a powerful exercise. Just, God, if you get help all your people, all your friends, turn an anger into passion, my God, how exciting is that going to be? Yeah. So next time a partner gets angry, is angry with you, say, cool, if you like, I can help you turn your anger into passion. Are you interested in that? If not, I'm walking away right now. Or I can help you turn it into passion. Good it just depends. Planet. It just depends on where they're willing to change. If they're willing to change, shown by the tone scale here, you need to get them into pride and the courage to change. And the courage to change comes from motivation. Why do you want to change the fire energy, um, Camilla? Right? Why do you need to change? Why do you want to change your relationship? Well, I didn't like that, you know, Camilla. I right? wasn't liking what was going on, right? And and for you, Jade, it's about why do you want to change? Well, you you got the courage to change because you don't like driving to work every day. So you know, this morning, Jade, about uh, nine o'clock after doing some work because I got up at five to start work, right? Mm. Is is. About about eight thirty, I went to walk to a local park, which is about hundred yards away, right? And across all the roads, and I'm watching all these guys drive to work in lineups, and I go, "Oh my God! Thank God I don't do that." See, that would make me angry, mm. which is okay because it was telling me, "Paul, you're an idiot. Stop doing that." You know what I mean? That's why I haven't been in a job since for about forty years. I haven't been in a job. Nine, the last time I was in a nine to five job was nineteen eighty. Isn't that interesting? It's awesome. Yeah. 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 But see, I learned a lot because I saw my dad when I was a teenager being in a nine to five job and hating it and coming home work, from work angry. And that was, that was an experience for me going, oh my God, in my life that motivated me to have the courage. I'm never going to allow myself to be locked into a job. That was a belief I formed mm -hmm. when I was a teenager. We have done that. That's why I've been mm -hmm. in my own business and I can travel the world and do whatever I do. Right, so I've got to thank my dad for helping give me that experience. Mm. Excellent, well done. So the emotional tone scale is very, very powerful, and I, I like this model of it because it actually says it gives a little bit of an explanation above them. Mm. All right. Yeah, it's really cool. I like how it's got all the you know, creative energy. Yeah, yeah, because this is about yeah. moving into creative, and you see, yeah, that's you look on the left-hand side there, the power, mm. power first appears at two hundred. Courage. You need the mm. courage to change. And if you get angry yeah. enough with your life and honour yourself, mm. you get the courage. See, Jade, mm. you're saying, to, you know, from what you've said, well, you're angry with yourself because you're in a job you don't like and driving to the work and all that shit, right? Is mm. that now you've got the courage to change. Excellent. So you've used that anger in a very powerful way. Anger's a very, it's like any emotion, it's amazing. If we connect to it, it's why we got to love it. So next time you're angry, go, thank God, anger, I love you. Give it a big hug. You know what I mean? What are you here to teach me? Yeah. And same with, same with like Camilla just said, how, you know, she got angry because she wasn't what was liking within the relationship. And now she's changed it into a more loving relationship that she's got, which she's passionate about. See how powerful is that? That's how we use anger. Okay, so if we don't deal with anger and it's unresolved, this is the impact it has in our life. Well, first of all, it can have very destructive impacts in our behaviour. If we're angry, we quite often get violent. 
we quite often want to get revenge on people, right? Because we believe other people make us angry, right? Which means you can shout, criticize, complain, and judge other people, tell them what an idiot they are, whatever it is, right? <clears throat> so revenge is a very strong human emotion. It's one of the strongest. People have revenge. How many wars in the world are created by revenge or conflicts or, yeah, it's caused by the revenge. I've got to get back that person back because they did this to me. No, no one does anything to you because everything is created by you, the law of attraction. So revenge is an illusion, right? Quite often people break things. If you've got a lot of passive mm -hmm. anger, but you're not dealing with it, this is, and I'm telling from my own personal experience, you tend to break things around you. I kept breaking things in one week. I kept breaking things. Like I broke my computer and I broke, I, I packed out my car. And I go, oh my God, why am I breaking all these things? And I realised it was my anger coming out. But because I was trying to hide it, it still wanted to come out. People can get into self-destructive behaviour. Can remember anger? If you hold on to it in your body, it is very destructive. Because you know why it's destructive? Because you're holding on to an energy that wants you to change something. And if you've got this energy inside of you to destruct, which is destruct the old, to let the new in, then you're going to self-destruct if you hold on it inside of you. And that, examples of that can people can have addictions, right? Which can be self-destructive. Which can be like, you know, getting really addicted on drugs or they can get really addicted on food, which makes them really fat and unhealthy. Right, or they can get addicted to self-destructive gambling behaviour, whatever it is. So addictive behaviour is quite often a sign of anger that hasn't been dealt with, and it makes them feel really bad. And then they get angry with themselves. Oh my God, I'm doing this because you know what I mean. They 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 actually get angry with themselves rather than going, I oh, know why am I, why am I angry? What do I need to change in my life? And if you don't know, if you can't connect to the anger, well, you go to a, you go to a healer to help you. So you have destructive behaviour. That's one adverse impact of anger. The other major impact it has is on your body. Now, we hold emotions in different parts of our body, right? Anger, it tends to be held in the liver and the gallbladder. And connected to the uh, liver and the gallbladder is the appendix. So I can tell you that anyone who has had appendicitis is very angry. And having appendicitis is one way for the body to get rid of the anger by having the appendix taken out. <laughs> Still means they haven't dealt with their anger, but the body's released a lot of anger from the past. So anyone who's had appendicitis, I can tell you they've got anger issues. Now, related to the liver, we know that when we drink alcohol, alcohol physically has a very dramatic, detrimental impact on the liver, right? And therefore, when people drink alcohol, because it actually affects the liver physically, and the liver is also known as the anger organ, people quite often get very angry when they drink. Mm -hmm. And it brings out their violence. And that's why quite often you see when people drink a lot, they get very angry. Don't you? You, see, you know, there's a lot of destructive, angry behaviour, aggressive behaviour. Um, and I know, like, when I was a teenager, like, going out with a group of guys, they get really angry and aggressive when they drink. And they think they can do anything. You know what I mean? How many examples are there in the world of elite sports men, especially, go out and drink, and they think they can do anything to women? How many mm -hmm. cases are there in the world about sexual abuse by, you know, there's... I don't know if you watch American football, but the, one of the, the um, quarterbacks in America, he's on 22 sexual charges. But it's quite common. You know, we've got a, one, of the, one of the top NRL footballers in, in, in Australia. He's up, he's, up, he's up for, well, he's actually been guilty and he's going to be in prison. You know what I mean? But you hear about it all the time, don't you? Elite, elite sports people go out and drink and it, it actually brings up their anger. And they try and control and be very aggressive and get violent. So it affects the liver a lot. It also affects, as it is reflected by Jade, it reflects your jaws a lot. We hold a lot of anger in our jaw. So when I look at people, I can look at their jaw. And I, so I look at Jade right now, I can see how much anger he's got in his jaw. 
So Jade, if you look at if you look at Camilla compared to your jaw, she's got a lot less anger. She's still got some, but she's released a lot, especially recently. So if Camilla, if you look at yourself picture now, a couple of weeks ago, before mm -hmm. while the relationship was in the old relationship, you had a lot more anger then. Yeah. yeah. Go, go, go and compare pictures of yourself, right? And see, and you'll see that. Okay. Because you know when dogs get angry, you see, uh, they grit their teeth. So if people have any issues about gritting their teeth, you know, at night, yeah, that's that's a form of anger. Absolutely. Yeah. People are gritting their teeth, that's anger. But we hold it in our jaw. So people's jaws are really tight. People's jaws are really tight. The whole cheekbones, right? I can see it right, Jade, like all your jaw, jaws here are really, really tight. So one way to release that is, and remember it's about dealing with the anger in the long term, right? But your body wants to release it. But one thing you can do is actually do a big cow yawn. So right now, Jay, before you do it, I just want you to feel the energy around your jaw. Just just focus your attention on your cheeks all around here. Just feel the energy. Same for you, Camilla. And now what I want you to do is take a big in-breath. And on the out breath, I want you to be a big cow yawn. And breathe out through your mouth. Big cow yawn, really spread your jaw. As wide as you can. Do that a couple more times. Big in breath, through your nose. Out breath, do a big cow yawn. Come out and do a couple more. Okay, so we're just going to give you get, do it one more time. This time, I want you to imagine that your mouth is a volcano. And then when you're breathing out, you're going to blow out all the anger inside of you like a volcano. Because this is one way the Earth lets go of anger that humans haven't. It's through uh, a, a volcano eruption. I did this with a kid, right? This is an exercise I gave an eight-year-old boy. He loves it. He does it every night before he goes to bed. He does, he does his volcano exercise. He says, Mum, I'm doing the volcano now. Right? He loves it. Right? So this time, Jade, when you do it, I want you to imagine that all the anger inside of you is like black ash when you breathe in. And on the out breath, I want you to imagine all that black ash is just going to blow out through your mouth like a volcano. And you're going to blow it up into the clouds and the angel's going to turn it into gold. Now, now do the out breath. As it, to, we'll call it the volcano breath. It's really, yeah, that's it, Jay. Just really imagine, feel all that anger in your chest, in your head, in your liver, is all being blown out, and the earth's going to turn into gold. One more. Begin breath. It's a lot of gold. Cool. So, Jay, that's something you can do when you're driving along. You can also do that. But because you've got a lot of anger, Jade, inside of you from the past, you haven't let go of, this is one way to release past anger. Because remember, if there's a lot of anger in it, inside of us that we haven't dealt with, you need to release it from your body. Otherwise, your body's like a time bomb. Mm. right? And that means you could be on the road and have road rage and someone cut you off and you suddenly do something crazy like crash their car or something. How do you feel from doing that exercise? More relaxed. Yeah? Cool. Have a look yeah. at your jaw right now. Oh, my God. Come on, have a look at his jaw. It's so different already. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to shut the screen. It's tense. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. Have a look at his jaw. Feel your jaw right now. Mm. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. No, it definitely feels different. But for you, Jay, More relaxed. do it. Yeah, but yeah. when you do it, Jade, you've yeah. got to do it from a liver, like do it from your, your solar plexus, because you've got it in your liver and gallbladder, and through your heart. It's like This is like your volcano. It, it comes up from the lower part of your body, through your chest, out through your mouth, and you blow it out right through your mouth, like the big volcano breath. Yeah, almost like a primal scream. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Yeah, because shouting yeah. or screaming is the main way of releasing anger. 
Yeah. But people don't allow themselves. Usually people shout at other people, but they need to just shout to release from energy from themselves. Hmm. So if you yeah. allow people to scream at you, that means you've got self-worth issues. It's not about the other person, it's about you. If a person screams at me, I walk away. That's what I do. Yeah. I go, ah! Oh! I said, no, I'm not talking to you. I said, you're insane. I can't talk to you, you're insane. I walk away from them. <laughs> Like there's a drunk, there's a, I live in a community house and there's a drunk the other day doing that. And he wanted to talk to me and he's really angry. And I said, no, I, can't, I can't talk to you. You're actually insane right now. And I'm not interested. I just walked away from him. And he's shouting. And about, say, I didn't, I'm not resisting him. I'm just walking away being in my own power because I want to be tranquil. Yeah. So I, I didn't actually get involved in all. I didn't resist it. I just said, I'm just not going to experience it. I don't need to. I don't need. I'm. I'm honouring myself. So I got into pride, which is above anger. And and both of you are honouring yourselves in terms of that decision. Like Camilla said, no, I'm not having that relationship anymore. That doesn't work for me. I'm going to change it. So the anger is powerful. Like for you, Jay, the anger is telling you, no, you haven't been honouring yourself for a long time, and it's time for you to honour yourself and know that all the wisdom you have, and go and do what you need to do. Which you tell the world all about what you know. Mm. that's yeah. really cool yeah so there's some good exercise um to let it go yeah is to do that releasing exercise in the short run but in the longer run it's about anytime you get angry is connect to the anger hello anger thanks that be you're my mate what message have you got for me what what do i need to change and what act loving action can i take right now to do that to help that change happen Jade, for you now, it's doing that course. Excellent, great. So when you're driving on the road, Jade, you can you can imagine being in that in your heart doing that amazing course and going, oh my God, that feels really cool. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Makes sense. And remember, it's about, when we get back at the start, we gave you that exercise of allowing yourself to be in that calm, tranquil energy. Do that exercise every morning. This is how I'm going to start off my day. It's interesting that Camilla's name is Carmella. It's like calm is in a word. No. Carmella, right? She's all about calmness. Yeah. Right? She, <laughs> likes, she loves calm. See, but you've created conflict in your life, Camilla, to realise that you don't like it, but you just need to know how to change it. Yes. But for you, it's not. you're not about resisting it anymore. If you feel people anger around, you go, okay, you walk away and go, what do I need to change right now? If I'm feeling an anger, if I'm creating an angry person around me, what is it I need to change? What is it about anger I need to learn? Yep. Like that girl who said she had all these angry boyfriends, right? There's something she needed to change, which would deal with her dad. As soon as yep. she did with that, she married the next man who was a beautiful musician. Yeah. So allow yourself every day, I suggest, start off with having a calm morning. It's a calm morning this morning. Huh. Yep. Because you know, one of my clients, you know, she said to me, Paul, I can't sleep. And you know, the first thing I said to her is, What do you do in the morning? She said, Oh, the first thing I do in the morning is I hit my alarm clock and I'm rushing around to go to work. And I said, Well, I wouldn't want to go to bed either if that's the first thing you do in the morning. Because she's scared of going to bed because you go, Oh my God, I get up in the morning. Is it like a lot of people, right? So you know what I said mm -hmm. to her? I want you to get up earlier. She said, Oh my God, get up earlier. I said, Yeah. I want you to get up 15 minutes earlier and do something that you really like to do. And I said, What do you like to do? And she said, Gardening. I said, Okay, get up in the morning and do 15 minutes of gardening. That changed her whole life. She slept well because, yeah, oh, yeah, in the morning I get up and do some gardening. You know? So it changed her whole life, right? Because she started off being calm doing something she really enjoyed. So I start off every day doing something I really enjoy. Getting up and hitting the alarm clock and rushing around like a chook with the head cut off, who would want to do that at the start of the day? Well, that's one reason we don't do a nine to five job, right? But that's why, and the same for you um, at the moment, Jade, because you're in a job right now until you change it, get up in the morning and do something you really like. What do you like to do in the morning, Jade? Um, well, I like to, if I can, exercise and meditate because that's a good way to start the day. Yeah. And a cold that? shower. Do you do yeah. that? Uh, not at, not all the time, no. Okay, so this has got to be a ritual. Yeah. A ritual makes us rich. It's like ritual. It makes us all rich. <laughs> you do rituals, right? 
So do a ritual. And this is part of you having pride to get rid of your anger. Pride is actually about honouring yourself. So you go in the morning, Jade, you've got to say the first 10 minutes or 15 minutes is mine. And if you're living with a partner, you even say that the first 15 minutes is mine. And even before you have sex, you get out and do whatever you do. So, okay, I'll be back in 15 minutes and then we can have sex, right? But make the first 15 minutes yours. Okay, I'm going to go and meditate, right? I'm going to do this in the morning, something I really enjoy doing and you're honouring mm. your own experience. See, I like Spanish. I'm learning Spanish, right? I really love Spanish. So I, I do 15 minutes of Spanish. I'm doing this online Spanish course, right? I've got up to advanced. And I do 15 minutes in the morning. I love it. I get up in the morning and go, cool. I'm just about to start some Spanish. Get a coffee and, and drink some Spanish. See, I know I'm going to have an enjoyable first 15 minutes. I don't look at my Facebook. That's the worst thing you can do in the morning, first thing, is look at your Facebook. Making your life dependent on what other people think about you. Right? <laughs> Right. Validation. Yeah. Validation. Yeah. No. You, yep. know, you never look at it your is. Facebook for at least thirty minutes, ever in the morning. It's just getting up and going. Yeah, that's going to be really important for you, Jay. I feel. Yeah. Have a ritual. I'm get and you and you speak to your girlfriend or partner about it. And say, look, this first fifteen minutes, I, I really want to start on a calm space. And now it's about doing that calm exercise. That should be part of your both of your rituals now. The exercise we did at the start of tonight, we went into that tranquil space of being mm -hmm. calm and wherever it is, right? Like for Car Camilla, it was actually being on the beach. Yeah. Allow yourself to be in that beautiful space, the start of a day. And you're putting, you're sending the energy out to the world. Oh my God, this is where I am right now. You're creating from a calm space. You're going to have a calmer world. Or of attraction. 100%. Yeah, cool. Okay, so have we got any questions? That was awesome. Much, I got it. Yeah, it was fantastic. Cool, Thank excellent. You. So, yeah. as you do, really it's really interesting the timing because I just trust that it's going to finish on time. It's right on 8.30, it's about an hour and a half. So what we'll do just to complete, and remember you guys, will, I'll send you a copy of this, and Jade, I'll also send you a copy of the um, emotional transcript. And if Camilla can't seem to find it, you can send me a text and I'll send it to you, right? Uh, so, Jade, what's the biggest thing you learned tonight? Um, well, the for me it was that last exercise where I connected to the um, the anger that I had on the way driving home, and then what was it trying to teach me? I mean, if you if you have that approach to any emotion, especially anger, then it's you know, it's not something that'll sit there. You move through it, and you might learn something because that's what I've been doing. Is as I you all know, you, know might, you might not might learn something. You will learn something. You will learn something. Yeah. Yep. So, and I won't hold on to it, which has been my, you know, something I've been doing for a long time as well. So that's, that's something that I will take away. Um, sure. And yeah, we'll learn from. Excellent. And that's really empowering. And see, the important point there is that, see, a lot of people don't deal with their anger, Jade, because they don't know how to deal with it and never taught yeah. them how to deal with anger. So what they do yeah. is they resist it and they hold it in their body and it creates all that destructive impact on your body as well as your destructive behaviours. Mm. So this is going to be life-changing for you. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. If you know how to deal with anger, it's going to change your life. Because if you don't deal with anger, it's extremely destructive. But if you actually connect to anger and use it as a catalyst for change, it is amazing. That's why you get excited by anger. Oh, my God, thank God I'm angry. Excellent. What are you teaching yeah. me? What do I need to change in my life? Oh, my relationship, my work, whatever it is. Right? As, yeah. like, as for me, Jay, like Camilla knows this because I've been talking to her, right? Because I've felt a bit of anger and frustration recently. And, and, and uh, Camilla said to me, I've got to make a change in my business, right? So there's that, that so something needs to change. I'm still connecting to what it is yet. But, and when, Jay, when Camilla said it to me, I felt the energy and said, Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I need to change something to get more excited in my life, right? Yeah. With my business, I need to do something exciting and joyful. Because I need something to be joyful and excited, right? Because what I'm doing is it's, it's so easy for me now because we don't for so long, right? Now I've got to mm. do something different. That's cool, right? That's why I got angry and frustrated, which, which Camilla picked up. Is that cool? Thanks for sharing that, Jay. Thanks for being here. Camilla, what, what, what's the big thing you learned tonight? The big thing that I learned is um, 
passion, turning anger into passion for me yeah. and moving forward and helping other people, my clients and my relationships to also understand why are we experiencing it and what is it that we need to do to lift us to go to a higher energy vibration level yeah. so that I'm not in this low vibration. Totally. And therefore, like, yeah. great, great point. And therefore, like, I would have put, like I did with you guys, I would put that map of the map of consciousness in front of them. Mm. Or yeah. even get copies of it or, or say you're going to send it to them. Yep. Yeah. Because yeah. if people can yeah. see that, it's a really, really powerful chart. I know even Jade tonight looked at it and said, oh, yeah, it's really power powerful, right? Yeah. Then people can yeah. look at it and go, oh, yeah, I've got to get into pride and I've got to get into courage to move up yep. that, right? Yeah. I can feel this is going to change a lot of your, it's going to be very empowering for your clients. Yeah. And I love the whole, you know, nose and just that connection of yep. alignment. Yeah. 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 I'm going to yeah, tell you, yeah. as a little trick I did, this is how I move my anger because, you know, I'm very playful, right, is what I do is I came up with this exercise that I put all my anger into fire trucks and I drove, I drove the, the, the anger from, from wherever it was in my body into my heart to turn into passion by, by putting it into yeah. fire trucks because, you know, I'm a fire person, right? That was my little way of doing it, right? Which made it very playful. Um, oh, yeah. It's the anger. anger. Hey, you're extinguishing the anger. You could say. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, in a way, you're not extinguishing. That's true, but you're actually turning it into passion. So you you're actually yeah. making it because passion Very is a cool. really powerful energy. Yeah. And you know the word passion? Pass I on. The word passion, right? Break it up. Pass I on passion. So you're passing yourself on. That's why you get excited. So when your passion is about that's excitement, true. it's a it's a similar energy to anger. But it's a very creative energy rather than destructive. So as Cam I can see, you know, if you look at Camilla right now, Jade, it's really interesting. See that right above it is all white light. That's all the angel mm -hmm. energy above her. Isn't that exciting? Right? It's all the white energy that you're connecting to above, all right? That's yeah. really, really cool. So, yeah, I, I can see that Camilla's going to have a lot of fun helping a lot of her clients turn destructive energy into passion of what they really want to do in their yeah. lives. How exciting is that? Yeah, it's going to be awesome. So thank you so much for tonight. It was really, really valuable. Thanks for that. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, for you guys. And of course, as you know, this is all. This is going to help a lot of other people too because um, one reason why I do these talks, it's not about the people here. How many? I don't care about how many people come because this is watched by a lot of other people, right? And they, a lot of other people are going to learn about anger. Because, for instance, you know, the last talk about anxiety, Jade, I've got a few clients out of that because I showed them, right? And people, oh my God, I learned so much about anxiety, right? And this is, I like to do these talks as a way so I can make a, a video of it so it can help people. Yeah, that's that's one reason why I do it, right? Mm. Cool. Excellent. Well, so great, amazing. guys. Great talking to both of you. Have a great night. Have fun with your exercises. And, yeah. uh, I will. Looking, and looking forward to, to, to you being in your passion more. Yes, for sure. But no, see you, Jay. Good to see you, Kamala. Take care. Okay, and see you guys. Thanks. See you next yeah. time. Thanks for that. Bye. See ya.